Hello, today we're going to be looking at how to host a call in Google Meet. Obviously there are different ways you might set up a Google Meet, but once you're in and you've got your participants in the call, we're going to look at all the different tools and activities you can use within the Google Meet call. So before anyone else joins, we're going to look at some of the core tools that you've got on every Google Meet call. Along the bottom, you've got a number of different buttons here. The very first one is to turn off your microphone. So if we turn this off, no one will be able to hear us speak, obviously, and if we turn it on, then we are able to be heard. Equally, the same is here for your camera. You can turn this on and off. Next along, you've got captions. If you turn on captions, then what you're saying or what others are saying will appear across the bottom of the screen. So this is a great tool for anyone who might be hard of hearing, deaf, or who can't listen to the audio for some reason. So as someone speaks, whether it's you or whether it's someone else in the call, the text appears in captions across the bottom. So to turn that off, again, you just click on the Turn Off Captions button. Next along, we've got Raise Hand. This is great in a meeting context if you want people to raise their hand if they'd like to speak or in response to something. So again, click that and then the hand is raised, little icon here, and then if you want to lower your hand, click it again. Next button here, we're going to look at how to present on a call. So if I click present now, I get three different options. This is for your entire screen. So if I do this, this means that everything on a screen will be shared which means I can then flick easily between different tabs or windows, depending on what I want people to see when I'm sharing. This is also really helpful if you have two screens, uh, you could share the screen that is on a different screen if you've got a different monitor or screen available. If you just want the window, so the window is like here, the window, I've got two tabs open, this is a window. You might have a window you want to share that is separate from your Google Meet. And last of all, you've got a tab. Now this is the best if you, it says here for video and animation. So if you are gonna share a video and play a video over the Google Meet for others to listen to or watch, then click the tab and then you share. We're gonna click this for now. And as you can see, I've got the different tabs available. So if I click the YouTube tab, I can then click share. Now, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, there is a share tab audio button. So if you want that shared, then make sure that is ticked. I click share. This then appears, it's taken me directly to the tab so I can play my video. And when I'm done, I can click stop sharing here. Or if I go into my Google Meet, I can click back down here and click stop presenting. As you can see just at the top here, there's another tick box for presentation audio. So if I did change my mind, I can untick that and the audio from that tab will no longer be playing. The next thing we're gonna do is look at the display options. So I've had some people join us here. And first thing we can do is change our layout. So we've got some different options. Auto means it will vary depending on what's going on. So you could change that and sometimes it will be one person on the screen, sometimes it will be multiple tiles on the screen. If you do have lots of people on the screen, you could have tiled, and down the bottom here allows you to change how many tiles you're gonna have in a maximum size. So down from six all the way up to 49. Next is spotlight, so this means whoever is speaking will be spotlighted, and sidebar is similar with the spotlight and then other people down on the right-hand side. If you do have, for example, tiled, when you are on a call, if you do want to, you can then pin somebody. So if you hover over them when they're speaking, or if for whatever reason you pin them, then they become the main feature on the screen. This is particularly good if somebody is presenting their screen and you want to uh, see it in a larger view. Another thing that can help with that as well is if I click on the more options, I can turn on the full screen. Because again, often when someone's sharing the screen, it can be hard to see what's on it. So if I click full screen, I could do that and I would also probably change it to just spotlight so I can see as much of the person's screen when they're sharing. To unpin you just click on this again and unpins them. 
The next thing we're going to show though is open picture in picture mode. So if I click on this, what happens then is I see my call down in the bottom right hand side. But then if I go onto a different document, I still see the call. So it's a great way of being able to keep an eye on what's going on in the call if you do have to be on a different tab or window on your device. If I want to go back, I can click here and click back to tab and that undoes that. Next we've got visual effects. So for this, I will have to turn my camera on. So as you can see here, and I will pin myself just so you can see it, we've got some different blur options. So minor blur and major blur. Now it's not going to make a big difference because I've got a plain background, but can definitely be of advantage if you've got more stuff going on in the background. Then you've got some different options here. You've got some animated uh, backgrounds as well. So I can have my morning view or just kind of pictures as well. So we've got fireworks, some flowers, etc. And some of these are quite uh, authentic and I've had meetings where people have thought I'm actually in that place. So next we're going to go on to some activities. Now the first ones I'm going to show you are part of every Google plan. So these are the whiteboard activities and the chat. Now the chat you might be familiar with, you've got a chat box here and if I click on the icon you can see the chat messages um, in here. As a host I can turn this off if I don't want other people posting in the chat and just I will be allowed to as the host. But this is a great way of asking questions, um, just having discussion, sharing information, links and things like that. The next option we're going to have is our whiteboard. We can click here and you can see the whiteboard here opens or if I click on activities I can see it here whiteboarding. So I can start a new whiteboard or I can choose an existing one. And so the whiteboard is basically a jam board. So if I click on this we're going to open that up. Obviously, it will invite everyone to this. So I'm going to share that with them. Do I want them to view it or to be editors? So if it's collaboration, then I definitely want them to be able to edit it. So now we can see this Jamboard. And if I go onto a different view of one of my other people, they can then see this. They've got a link to the Jamboard in the chat. And if they click on that, they can open that Jamboard too to collaborate and that's all connected with this meeting. The next activities that I'm going to show you are all part of the paid editions of Google Workspace. So whether you've got a teaching and learning license or if you've got Google Plus, then these will be available to you. So if you're not seeing these, it does mean you probably haven't got that license. So first of all, we're going to go into breakout rooms. So breakout rooms are a great way of having discussion uh, in smaller groups. So if I click on here, I can then click on set up breakout rooms. I can choose how many breakout rooms you want. I can set a timer to say how long the breakout room is going to be for. So I can say after three minutes. I can shuffle them so that it's a random assignment in the rooms or and then I can reset it here. Now if I want to, I could name my rooms but I can also move people around. So I can drag and drop and move people into different groups if I wanted to. Once I'm done, I click Open Rooms. And now people are being sent into that. So again, let's go back into somebody else. They've been invited to join a breakout room. If they click Join, as you can see, they've got three minutes timer there. And you can also see they've left the main room. If at any time I wanted to, I can close the rooms and that means people would come back to the main room or I could click here and join. So if I go and join the room here, so this is a great, great way for a host to dip in and out of calls. Once I'm done then I can click leave and I'll go back to the main call and then I could join another room. So we're going to finish our breakout room session and click close rooms, close all rooms. Now it does give people a 30 second warning. If I go back into here, you can see they've got the warning there and so they can click return to main call and they can move back into the room. So remember there's always that 30 second buffer where people are invited back into the room where hopefully they finish off their conversations. So the next activity we're going to look at are polls. If I click polls here, I can start a poll. So 
So I can put my question in, my options. I can add additional options if I'd like. And then I can also choose whether I want these anonymous or not. So I, if I'm happy with this, I can click launch. If I want to come back to it later, I just click save and then I launch it at a later point. If I launch it now, so the poll is here and it's live as it says here. And then if I'm going to go back into one of my other users, the poll is there. So they click in the poll. And the poll comes up. Are you okay? Yes. I'm going to vote there. And if I go back into the original host, I'm keeping track of all these different screens, I can see the poll coming through. Now at this point, other people can't see the poll, but I can click here to show the results to everyone else. So again, so other people will then see the results of that poll. What also happens is at the end of the call, it will send me a spreadsheet with the responses to the poll and those who have voted in it. So it's a great way of actually capturing that data for future use. Another option you've got here is Q&A. So if I turn this on, it then means Q&A is now open. So one of my other users, go out of polls, you can see it's open by the little blue dot. They can go in here and they can ask a question. They can choose to post anonymously or not, and that's posted. Other people can like that because what that means is when I sort it, I can sort it by most popular. So I can answer that. When I've answered it, I can click the tick box to say, yes, this is answered. So that means also when I'm searching, I can search for unanswered or answered questions as well. And the last thing we're going to show is recording. So you can record by clicking here or again under the options button, you can click record meeting. So this is a great way of sharing the content of the meeting for people to look back on later or for those who couldn't make the meeting to see it. If I click the record button, start recording, it will ask me to make sure everyone's happy. So I should check before doing so to let people know that I'm going to record. Now, bear in mind, when you record, it will only record people who participate in the call. So if someone's got their microphone off, uh, their camera off as well, they're never going to be seen on the call. So if people are concerned, they could just do that. But the moment someone speaks, they will pop up, they will be a spotlight. So then they would appear on the recording. So if I click start, it gives me a countdown once it's ready. I think. So once I start and then it's recording now, and as other people in the call can see, it tells them that I have started recording. Once I'm happy with this, I can click stop recording. And that recording will be saved onto my Google Drive. So on your Google Drive, there will be a Google Meet recordings folder created if you've never done it before, and they are all saved in there. The last thing we're going to look at is some of the host controls. So first of all, I'm just going to click on this meeting details button. And in here, I've got copy joining info. So if I do want to share the link for the meeting with other people, I can click on that. It's now on my clipboard and I can send that to other people. If this were a calendar invite meeting, you would also see a list of anyone here who has been invited but is not in the call. Uh, with that as well, there is a little chat icon. So if you need to send them a message to say the call has started or anything like that, you can do so. But it's a great way for you to track those who should be in the call but aren't yet attending. So that appears just under info in this little area here. But that would be only for calendar invites. When we show everyone, as the host, I get the option to mute everyone. So if they're not muted already, I can click here to mute everyone. To add people, again, I can invite people by adding their email address. But I can also mute people individually. So if someone's microphone isn't off, I can click on the little icon and it will mute them. I'm not allowed to unmute them. That is something they would have to do themselves. As you can see, there is also the option to pin here. If I wish to, I can click on the actions and I can remove someone from a call or make them a co-host. So this is good as well, particularly if you are going to leave the call at some point, you can make someone a co-host so that they have all the hosting controls that you also have.
The last of the hosting controls you'll see in this little padlock area. So we can turn these on or off. I don't know why you would want to turn them off, but you can if you wish. But in this, you've got options. Will you let anyone share their screen, send chat messages, turn on their microphone? You might want to turn these off if you really want to control your call and their video as well. Here we've got an option for quick access. This is primarily for calendar events. So this is for people not invited to the event or from outside the organization, and they have to be admitted into the room. So if someone tries to join, that is where you then can admit them. If you deny them entry, they can try and join once more, but after you deny them entry twice, they wouldn't be able to join the call again. And lastly, we've got a couple of host options for Q&A, whether they're allowed to ask questions and whether they're allowed to ask them anonymously. So this is particularly for the Q&A section. So the very last thing we're going to do on our call is end it. We have the leave call button here. And if I click this button, it gives me some options. Is it just myself who's going to leave the call or do I end the call for everyone? If you are doing a call with students on the call, it's important that you end the call for everyone. Otherwise, students will be able to rejoin the call without you being present. So if I click end the call for everyone, Everyone is then kicked out and the meeting is over. So I hope this has been helpful in showing you how to host a call in Google Meet.